This is ABC 15 Mornings. It's much more than just funny filters and dancing. Several local parents whose children have purchased on Snapchat who are no longer with us. New this morning is more monitoring needed on special social media platforms. Nothing comes without a cost. Included in the things they agree to are their browsing history, their search history, things they've purchased, financial information. There are no free phone apps to let you know, team, with how to protect yourself. It's going to reduce your risk of getting sick, reduce your chances of passing it on to other people. Time to start thinking about getting a vaccine, but this one isn't about COVID-19. Rebranding and redefining itself. It's risky. It's a risky move, but they need a bold move. Victoria's Secret says goodbye to the Angels. And Extreme Golf returns to ABC 15. Hi, everybody. I'm Corey Matheson, and I am the Girl Power Golf Mom. Season 3 of Holy Moly, ready to make another splash and leave you smiling. She just looks like she's from Arizona because she's having fun. <laughs> she's so happy. Yeah, I can't wait to cheer her on today. <laughs> exactly. Hey, good morning to you. Thanks for starting your Thursday with us. We appreciate it. Kaylee O'Kelly along with Nick Saletti. And we're working with you here to ease into an already warm morning. Oh, yes. Uh, that dog walk this morning. Oh. Oh. I thought Larry was prancing on the pavement, oh, right? He was going quick yeah. because it's uh, not feeling so good outside right now. It is another weather action day as we deal with more excessive heat. Meteorologist Iris Hermosillo has been doing such a good job keeping us posted all this week on this iris we know is this another day of this oppressive heat absolutely and dangerous heat too right so we talk about the heat risk every single day and today that heat risk essentially puts much of central and northwestern arizona in that very high range and you can see the oranges and the red spread across the rest of the state so heat continues to be the primary issue that we're dealing with here across the state and really across the region and what this means is that all of us are at risk for heat related illnesses things like heat stroke or heat exhaustion if we're not taking care of ourselves and so Far, it has been a really warm morning. Our temperature this morning has only gone as low as those low 90s. Uh, so because of that, we could still set a record for the warmest low temperature ever recorded on the state. Currently, that record stands at 88 and we're on record watch this afternoon. The forecast high 117 degrees. The record is 114. So that looking to set a new record too. We're at 92 right now in Phoenix. Again, we haven't gone lower than 91 yet. And I don't think we will. We'll actually climb a little faster too. So expect the hundreds today earlier by around nine o'clock this morning and then we'll top 110 by lunchtime before that high of 117 by the middle of the afternoon. I'm going to show you what our risk for thunderstorms looks like in our state today too in that full forecast. But for now, Megan Thompson is keeping a close eye on that Thursday morning drive. Hey, Megan. Hi, Iris. Definitely want to keep those windows rolled up and the AC cranked. This is a live look of the I-10 near Elliott. We have a beautiful live look with that sun and cars moving along really nicely again on the I-10 near Elliott on both sides of the freeway. As we move to the maps, we want to see what you're dealing with for your desert drive times from the I-10 westbound from the 202 Santan to the split. You're traveling perfectly at or above 65 miles per hour. It'll take you just 10 minutes in that area in the East Valley. All green conditions for you there for your desert drive time on the 101 northbound from the 202 to the 17. You're traveling above 65 miles per hour and speeds still looking good as you're approaching the stack and the 202 South Mountain. Nick. Megan, thank you. Right now, fire crews are hoping to maintain their progress as they continue to battle the telegraph fire that's burning east of the valley right now. The largest wildfire in the U.S. growing yet again to more than 165,000 acres. The good news is containment is going up. It's now at 72 percent. This time lapse video from the Globe Fire Marshal showing us that the smoke in this area continues to just billow throughout the sky. We spoke with a rancher forced to leave her horses and cattle behind when those evacuation orders came down. And at one point, our whole ranch was under red. And my husband and I looked at each other and said, we're done. We're done. We've lost everything. We really thought we had lost anything. And then fire command contacted us and they said, we think you're going to be happy. You're going to be very surprised with what you see. Well, thanks to dedicated firefighters, her animals survived and so did her home and barn. Thank goodness, right? Well, new for you this morning, we are learning more about the symptoms coming from that Delta variant of the coronavirus. That strain first reported in India. It's been identified now in at least 37 states, including Arizona. 
Headaches and sore throat are the kind of key features of this variant. Whether that'll hold up in larger data, we don't know, but it's something definitely to keep an eye on. And while vaccines appear to be effective against this strain, new reports suggest symptoms could be more severe. States with lower vaccination rates appear to be most at risk as well. Health experts are already looking ahead to this year's flu season. Last year, we had record low numbers, and experts say since fewer people caught the flu in the past year, it also means less immunity in the overall population. There's a lot of focus on the COVID vaccine right now, but experts are asking people not to forget to go and get their flu shot. Well, President Joe Biden is back in Washington this morning, wrapping up an eight day trip overseas, sitting down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Both leaders calling the summit positive. Cybersecurity was a big topic. Biden giving Putin a list of infrastructure areas that were off limits to attacks, warning if Russia violates this understanding, the U.S. will respond. Biden and Putin also agreeing to return U.S. and Russian ambassadors to Washington and Moscow. Law enforcement from Florida heading to Arizona and Texas. Governor Doug Ducey and Texas Governor Greg Abbott put out a call asking other states to help secure the southern border. Officers and deputies from more than 10 different agencies in Florida will be involved in this for a minimum of two weeks. It's unclear exactly what they'll do or when they will arrive. Well, if you have kids using TikTok and Snapchat, you really need to hear this story. Drugs laced with fentanyl are being sold through these social media platforms and unlike others, these don't allow third party apps to monitor what your kids are doing. So new for you this morning, our Carla Navarrete is sharing this national effort to get these social media giants to comply. It's negligence. It's pure negligence on the part of Evan Spiegel from Snapchat. Katie McPherson is talking about Snapchat along with TikTok, two social media platforms that don't allow for third party apps like Bark to monitor the conversations of teenagers. These apps would allow for parents to be alerted when things like drugs or sexting or bullying is happening through the app. Boxes are coming to our homes. We have several local parents whose children have purchased on Snapchat who are no longer with us. Shane Watson is a spokesperson with Not My Kid. He says the problem with pills like Xanax that are sold on social media is that they're being laced with the deadly drug fentanyl. If they get two milligrams or more of fentanyl, which is the lethal dose for an average size adult male, that's going to go from that high to a fatality. Pair that with the lethal dose of heroin being 30 milligrams. It takes 30 milligrams of heroin to kill someone. It takes two to three milligrams of fentanyl, and that is incredibly troubling. McPherson says a striker bill has been introduced at the state legislature. If it were to pass, it would make it a law that platforms like Snapchat and TikTok would allow third party apps to monitor conversations in underage users, which she says is their target audience. Certainly there's a long way to go with regulations, but it's not a heavy lift. It would take an engineer at Snapchat less than an hour to allow parents to protect. In Phoenix, I'm Carla Navarrete, ABC 15, Arizona. And we've also learned that attorneys general, excuse me, attorney generals from across the country are meeting this week to talk about ways or laws that could be enacted to make sure your kids and their accounts are, in fact, monitored. 608, the entire valley waiting for Saturday when the Phoenix Suns will give us an update on Chris Paul. And we hope it's a good one, right? Yes, fingers crossed. Point guard sidelined indefinitely after uh, testing positive for COVID. And this is going to be a very long couple of days. Paul is going to need to test negative twice for this and be asymptomatic in order to be back out there on the court for the Western Conference Finals. He may not miss a single game or he might miss the first three. No matter what, the fans we talk to are rallying behind him and the entire team. It'll be tough, but... You know, I feel like if there's any moment for Booker and the rest of the team to be like, no, this this is our team. Like, we're, we're going to go out and get it for Chris and, you know, for, for what's ahead. You know, this is the time to really show it out. In the meantime, all eyes remain on the L.A. Clippers and the Utah Jazz. The Clippers pulling out a win last night. Game six is tomorrow. And fingers, fingers are obviously crossed that there will be a game seven on Sunday, just to give some more time here. If not, the Suns will be back out there on the court with or without Chris Paul. How much money will your family get? Up next here on ABC 15 Morning, some new information on the upcoming child tax credit. Plus, does asparagus really help prevent hangovers? 
on your bulletin board and look at the latest TikTok trend. Let's get to your top stories today. House lawmakers are expected to pass legislation to take away some war making powers from the president. The authorization for use of military force was passed in 2002 as the war with Iraq started. Opponents say it gave the White House too much power when it came to conflict. A bill making Juneteenth a national holiday now heads to President Joe Biden's desk. Celebrated on June 19th, it marks the day the last African-American slaves were freed in Texas following the Civil War. This would be the first new federal holiday since Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 1983. Fireworks could be in short supply this Independence Day. The company Phantom Fireworks is blaming supply chain issues for slowing down some shipments. We put a list of fireworks shows in the valley on our things to do section. It's up on ABC15.com. Hard to believe that's so close, isn't I know, it? right? 613 and in about a month, families will start receiving child tax credits. The IRS launching a new tool too to help non-tax filers eligible for this money. Now for those who do file. This is money you would typically get from your return by taking it as a credit, but now it's just broken up in payments. The money will be sent out automatically based on your latest tax return on record or the information entered into that non filer tool. And it means if there are reasons you shouldn't receive the credit, you do need to opt out. So your income is going to go up where it makes you not eligible in 2021 or your child's age is going to increase where you would not be eligible, then you should opt out. Because um, one thing with the advanced payments, it, it, is, it is an advance. And if your situation changes, you will have to pay it back. Okay, and also it does apply if your situation changes in the opposite direction. So if your income drops or maybe have a new baby, you could be eligible for more money. All right, let's talk about that most accurate forecast. And I hate to be this person, but if you can limit those outdoor activities as much as possible and maybe skip that hike this morning or maybe skip that longer run, that's going to be your better bet as temperatures are already off to a warm start. But you know your body best. If you are going to be heading outside, do it sooner rather than later. In fact, today, do it before 9 a.m. because we're going to be in the hundreds by around 9 o'clock here this morning, earlier than we've seen the triple digits the last couple days even. We're also looking at at just sizzling hot conditions through the afternoon. So if you are going to be heading outside, like I said, do it early. Make sure that you're hydrating and don't forget to wear that sunblock too as our burn time is very short, especially if you have to be outside at around midday today. Now temperatures right now across the valley. We've got a mix of 80s and 90s. Tempe, Scottsdale, Deer Valley, Apache Junction and Goodyear all sitting right at 90 degrees this morning. It's a little warmer at Phoenix Sky Harbor even. It's in the low 80s though in Chandler. That's actually one of the cooler spots right now at 82 degrees 89 in Mesa though 89 in Peoria surprise you're checking in in the upper 80s too so we've had some clouds that essentially lingered overnight to early this morning they're clearing out now but those clouds trapping in that warmth overnight and that's why it's been another another very warm morning so Phoenix at 92 it's in the low to mid 90s at Lake Havasu and Bullhead City and look at those temperatures in northern Arizona Sedona at 82 degrees 81 in Payson Flagstaff you're checking in in the upper 50s and it's 70 right now in Sholo. That's where we are now. This is where we end up later. Today could be the hottest day of the year so far. That means the hottest day of this heat wave too with Phoenix set to top out at 117 degrees this afternoon. Yeah, two degrees hotter than the last couple days. We're up to potentially 122 at Lake Havasu. That'll be the hottest spot in the state with highs reaching the 90s again from Flagstaff to Sholo, Window Rock up to 96 degrees. Page at 104 this afternoon. So a quick warm up again 92 right now I think we see the hundreds by 9 a.m. and then we're already at 110 or hotter by lunchtime today so maybe you'll opt for lunch indoors pack a salad something refreshing and cool if you can uh, to enjoy inside then temperatures will top out at 117 degrees again by the middle of the afternoon but we're still at 110 or higher through 8 o'clock here tonight so today's temperature not only is it more than 10 degrees above the average high for this time of year again it could also set a record as the record stands at 114 degrees here in Phoenix. So the heat may keep you inside, 
the air quality may as well. Today, another ozone high pollution advisory with the highest ozone pollution by this afternoon. So that is something to be mindful of, especially if you have any breathing sensitivities. Plus, we still have some of that wildfire smoke in the air. It's still higher up in the atmosphere. It's not necessarily creating those issues at the surface like it was a couple days ago. But as you look at that smoke forecast, you're going to continue to see that bright white moving in across our area in central Arizona as smoke will continue to be a factor, giving us those hazy looking conditions again today. 117 today and tomorrow, then temperatures are at about 114 to 116 through the weekend. Challenging records at least today and tomorrow, but we're under an excessive heat warning through Sunday night before those temperatures drop just slightly below 110 by next Tuesday. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Iris was just keeping us posted on the wildfire forecast. Now, wildfires are continuing to have road restrictions in Arizona. Here's what I'm tracking this morning from ADOT. SR 77 is still closed in both directions. In US 70, the southbound lanes are closed. This is just past Globe. SR 177, the northbound lanes, those are closed in Winkleman. As we move back into the Valley. There's a wide look at the maps, mostly green conditions here on your Thursday morning. I-17 southbound from the 101 to the stack. You're traveling right around 65 miles per hour. It'll take you about 10 minutes and speeds on the 51 and the 101 it, looking good. Very green conditions for us there too. On the I-10 eastbound from the 303 to the mini stack, you're traveling at perfect speeds of 65 miles per hour. The speed limit, your drive time is 20 minutes. We're just seeing a little bit of slowing there in the West Valley in those lanes of the I-10 eastbound. In the East Valley, speeds at or above 65 miles per hour for us. And this is a live look of the U.S. 60, <laughs> just missing that zero there near Mesa Drive, where you see cars are moving along nicely there in the East Valley, Nick. Thank you so much, Megan. Some hilarious fun returns to ABC 15 tonight. A new season of the wild miniature golf show. Holy moly tees off tonight and just watching this, you know, it's going to be fun, right? I mean, they're out there on the well, this really unique golf course, right? We've got a gal from the Valley who's going to be out there appearing on the show tonight. Corey Matheson, she knows she's known as the girl power golf mom. Look at her. We all put our whole heart into this and this was so much fun. I just wanted to do my best to represent me and my family and Girls Golf of Phoenix. And we, I have no idea. I can't wait for it to be put together and I can see how that comes across. It's just great to see her having so much fun, right? She is a mom of three, and she also runs an empowerment group for girls that helps them build confidence through golf. And you can cheer her on during the second hour of the big premiere. The fun starts tonight at 7 o'clock right here on ABC 15. Hey, the Hail Murray was definitely the best play of the Cardinals last season, and now it's up for best play at the ESPYs. Kyler Murray throwing a 43-yard pass to DeAndre Hopkins, which is two seconds left on the clock to give Arizona Boom. the win over yes. Buffalo. Boom. Yeah, you can vote on this on the ESPN website. Also up for voting, Chris Paul nominated for Best Basketball Player, CP3. The Phil Mickelson also Best Male Golfer. The ESPYs are July 10th, so you got to hurry up. And vote. Absolutely. Get some Arizona representation. That's right. Well, hey, Phoenix Rising, speaking of Arizona, they're getting ready for a showdown in San Diego Saturday. And you can watch it all live on CW61 Arizona at 730. You can also stream it on our ABC 15 app on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Android TV. Still ahead, will it be a successful new strategy? Victoria's Secret giving itself a makeover. And there's a lot of things people claim help you feel better after a long night of drinking. Next, an expert weighs in on the latest hangover hack, making the rounds on social media. Looking forward to hearing how you feel about this on social media. Say goodbye to the Angels. We're talking about Victoria's Secret making some dramatic switches here. They're switching to what they're calling a more inclusive marketing campaign, the company adding a diverse group of brand ambassadors, including actress Priyanka Chopra Jonas and also soccer star Megan Rapino. Stores will have mannequins as well that represent different shapes and sizes. 74% of Americans are more likely to trust someone with an established personal brand. The data supports it, intuition supports it, and I just think it's, it's kind of like the cultural mood supports this. 
While Victoria's Secret has struggled in recent years, seeing sales decline, the company's new chief executive says the rebranding effort is about advocating for women. The annual Victoria's Secret fashion show was canceled in 2019. The company says it may return though next year, just in a different form. It's 625 on this Thursday. There are plenty of food hacks you can find right now on TikTok, including some promising to prevent hangovers. But do they actually work? The answer is on this morning's bulletin board. The video, which has been viewed more than 2 million times, claims eating asparagus before drinking will help you have a much easier and better morning after. However, the experts, mm, they're not so sure. According to one registered dietitian, asparagus does have bioactive substances that have been found to have an effect on protecting your liver cells and modify the impacts of alcohol. But the studies were done on cells and not humans. The dietitian says if you're reaching for a more reliable hangover cure, stick with bland starchy foods and plenty of fluids. So try it if you want. That's the message on today's bulletin board. What about like greasy food, like a uh, drive through right? Or mustard. I hear mustard, mustard. works. Mustard. Mm, yeah, no. salty pretzels Grease, too. Sal salty, greasy food. That, that's Bring it. Hard. Not that I have any experience. <laughs> hey, vegans rejoice for this. On Friday, Zen Nights is bringing back their vegan block party, Juneteenth edition. The free event is in downtown Mesa. It's going to have live entertainment, food, vendors, and more. To head to the corner of McDonald and Main Street. The block party runs from 6 to 10 p.m. A lot of good stuff happening oh, yeah. in downtown Mesa. Next at 6.30, the ASU football program under investigation for possible violations. What this could mean for the upcoming season. All of this data is being cross-linked to create a profile about you. So all that shopping or connecting with friends, it does come with a cost. Our Joe Ducey looks at the real price for those free apps you have right there on your phone.